Hello, welcome to Season 1, Episode 2 of Nightcap with the True Crime Recap. This is Dominish Miller, your host. Tonight I'm coming to you with a crime from Cly. May 13th, 1919. A railroad worker is murdered for money. Robert Hicks, 22 years old, said to have lived in Harrisburg before coming here, is being sought today as the murderer of Gabriel Pachika and the assailant of James Critchlow, fellow track worker men employed here by the Pennsylvania Railroad Company. Robbery is thought to have been the motive for the crime. The body of Pachika and the unconscious form of Critchlow were found at noon today by track foreman J.C. Lauer in a shanty where the victims said that the accused man lived. Hicks has not been seen since last night. A heavy iron bolt wrapped in a blood-stained towel found near Pachika's body is believed to have been the death implement. Both men were beaten on the head, the dead man's features having been destroyed by the blows of the assailant. The next article. Murdered man's body to be buried. James Critchlow, killed at Cly last May, will be given a funeral this evening. Tomorrow morning, the body of James Critchlow, the English man who died at the York Hospital following a murderous attack on the night of May 13th last by Curtis Sipple, alias Ari Hicks, in a railroad shanty at Cly, will be buried in Greenmont Cemetery. Funeral services will be conducted in the chapel of C.A. Strack and Sons. George and Princess Streets, this evening at 8 o'clock, by Reverend J.P. Kuntz, pastor of the Second United Brethren Church, officiating. Mr. Critchlow's death at the hospital was the result of a crushed skull caused by a blow from a blunt instrument in the hands of Sipple, who also is alleged to have murdered Gabriel Perchica, an Italian, at the same time. The body of Critchlow, taken in charge by the Strack firm, was embalmed and kept by the firm up to this time. Police and detectives, although they have searched diligently, have failed to develop a trace of Sipple since he visited his home in Cincinnati the day after the murder was discovered. Detective Jacob Cooks holds warrant for the arrest of Sipple, who is charged with the double murder. The detective has devoted much time to the case and followed a number of clues, but as yet he has not located the wanted man. He still entertains hope that Sipple will be apprehended, and a reward of $500 has been offered by the York County Commissioners for the apprehension and conviction of Sipple. The next article says that a fugitive is to be indicted for Clyde double murder on August 21, 1919. The case of Curtis Sipple, alias R.E. Hicks, charged with the murder on May 15th at this place of Gabriel Perchica and James Critchlow, has been returned by Alderman Owen to the District Attorney of York County, who will prepare a bill of indictment which will be presented to the grand jury next Tuesday afternoon, and witnesses in the case will be summoned to appear at that time. The warrant for the arrest of Sipple is in the hands of Detective Jacob Cooks. Renewed energy will be put into the search for the fugitive who has thus far managed to cover up his trail so that there is little for the officers of the law to work upon. Next, the suspect is released. A man is arrested in Marietta and brought here. It's not the Cly murderer. The local police and detectives last night experienced a water haul in the arrest of the Marietta man who somewhat answered the description of Curtis S. Sipple alias Robert E. Hicks, who was sought as the murderer of Perchica and James Critchlow. The man arrested gave his name as Harrison Cole of Butler, New Jersey, and when he faced men from Cly and Harrisburg who knew the fugitive, they promptly declared that he was not the man wanted. Cole arrived in Bainbridge sometime Wednesday afternoon and received employment at the stone quarries on the following morning. His arrival at the quarries Um, So soon after the commission of the crime caused suspicions to be directed toward him, especially so in the view of the fact that some points in the description of the wanted man tally in a way with Cole's appearance. Word was communicated to Justice of the Peace Hicks of Maytown of the suspicions and he went to the quarry and after sizing up the man placed him under arrest, taking him to the Marietta lockup. When he notified Chief Butteroff and the chief in turn notified Alderman Owen. Chief Butteroff and Detective Cooks went to Marietta and Cole was brought to York for examination. Captain Barclay, PRR Detective, Harrisburg, J.C. Lauer, Cly, PRR Track Foreman who hired the alleged murderer and William Allen Jones, Harrisburg, with whom Hicks boarded for a time, as well as George Schaefer, a car inspector, who saw him last Sunday visited Cole at Cly at 1.20 o'clock this morning. They all said that he was not the man that Hicks was much heavier, 
and he was released this morning and given the cost of his transportation back to Bainbridge. The police and the detectives are following out every clue in this search for the murderer and have not the slightest doubt of his capture in the near future. The body of James Critchlow, who died in the York Hospital on Wednesday, has been put in the care of undertaker C.A. Strack and Son, where it is awaiting disposition of the coroner or claimed by relatives. Our next article. Allowed Hicks to escape. Cincinnati police official New Slayer was home. Paul L. Barclay, captain of Pennsylvania Railroad Detectives, was in New York this afternoon and responded to District Attorney C.W.A. Rocho on his work in the search for Curtis Sippel, alias R.E. Hicks, who's wanted for the murder of Gabriel Perchica and James Critchlow in the shack at Cly last week. Captain Barclay was in Cincinnati, Ohio, where Hicks visited his mother and then made a safe getaway. The Cincinnati police knew of the fugitive's presence but failed to arrest him. District Attorney Rocho Gave, district, gave strict orders that the search for the murderer be continued until he is caught. Captain Barclay had with him pictures of the scene of the murder. One two of these pictures is clearly shown an inscription, Goodbye, Cly, which was written with chalk on the wall by the murderer before he left the shack on the night of the crime. Our next article reads, Sybil's Trial for Murder 1, York, October 24th. The Clyde double murder case in which Curtis Sippel, alias Ari Hicks, is accused of the murder of Gabriel Perchica, an Italian, and James Critchlow, an Englishman, follow employees of Sippel, fellow employees of Sippel, who were employed as trackmen at Clyde by the Pennsylvania Railroad Company, was scheduled to begin in court here today. The murder occurred in a shack at Clyde on the night of May 13, 1919. Sippel, who had been a prisoner in the York County Jail since May 13th last, is accused of one of the most brutal murders ever committed in the country in the county. His mother, who lives in Cincinnati, has been in New York once since his arrest and probably will attend the trial. George S. Love of the city has been engaged to defend the accused. Sippel, Perchica, and Kitchlow occupied a shack near Cly Station. Sippel was penniless when he joined the crew and his companions helped him out until he was able to draw his first pay from the company. On the morning of May 13, 1919, the three men failed to report to work. About 11 o'clock, the game foreman, Jacob, found the bodies. Our next and last article. Curtis Sippel must die for Cly murder. York, PA. Today, Curtis Sippel, 22 years old, today was sentenced by Judge Warner to die for murder of two men in a shack along the Pennsylvania Railroad at Cly two years ago. Sippel was captured in Kentucky after being searched for two years by state police for the murder. Hello, welcome to season one, episode two of Nightcap with 